if you have a space heater that looks like this that's not working this video may help you fix it and it's pretty easy to do it's not that hard um, to start off let me show you you know which model I have I just here's a shot of the front front panel and what it looks like and here's a shot of the back it is a life smart and it says it's a 1500 watt infrared heater there's the model number And looks like that. So, if you're handy with a screwdriver, there's a good chance you could probably fix your unit. And to start off, you're going to want to remove, at least on, on my unit, it was the left side panel here. It's a, it's a plastic panel. So, that's the side we want to access and remove. To remove the left side panel, there are five screws you want to get. Um, just lay the unit on its side, um, and you'll see here by the wheels on the, this is the bottom here. One, two, three, four, and five. Get those five screws, and the side panel will come off. You don't need to mess with the ones that are on the directly on the bottom here. You can leave these alone. Just the ones that are on the side rim here. So once you got the screws off, you're going to remove the side panel. Um, you're going to pull it out. And it just pop off like that. And then you should see the metal plate. Now you know you're going to be on the right side. If you see that harness, the blue and red wires going to the side you're working on, you know you're in the right place. If for any reason you see that going on the other side, um, I'd probably switch sides and remove the screws from the other side. Once you have the cover removed, the plastic cover, you need to remove a whole bunch of screws here for this metal plate. And you're gonna start up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's six more underneath here. So that'd be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 screws you have to remove. If you have a cordless, that makes it nice and easy. Otherwise, handheld is just fine. They're not that hard to remove. Once you have the side removed, you're going to want to lay it on its right side. Well, at least on my unit, it was the right side. And you're going to look for these two components right here. One and two. This is some form of, it's a form of thermal fuse that uh, can actually go bad on the unit. It's very easy to replace. You're going to remove the clips. that they pull right off and then once you do it's just a Phillips screw head on each side to remove that and you're gonna do the same thing here those pull right off and these two units you want to remove from the heater when I removed mine, I noticed there was a whitish type of gunk that seeped out from mine. And uh, I think that's why it went bad. You may or may not see that, but um, the back has some specs on it. You can see it's 16 amp, 125 volt, and the 150, yeah, that's a temperature, I believe that's a Celsius reference um, to, the, to the temperature on it. But this is what you want to pull off and replace.
So this is the replacement thermal fuse. Well, that's what I'm going to call it. If it's not the right term, then someone can harass me. But um, this is the replacement I ordered. I The one I ordered actually was supposed to be 125 um, volt. And after I got it, I noticed the stamp here, of course, says 250 volt. If you look online, you're going to see a lot of them are 250 volt. The 125 volts are very hard to find. But they... Even though I ordered 125, they shipped me the 250. I uh, I went ahead and used this anyways, and um, it seems to be working fine. So um, this one it says it's 120 Celsius, 250 volt, 16 amp, KSD 301. And the 120 degrees Celsius, that translates to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. So approximately 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you remember my original, it was stamped 150. I'm not certain that, I mean, that could have been Fahrenheit. Um, so if so, this is a much higher threshold than the original. Um, someone may chime in and say that's dangerous to, to do this. Um, I never use this heater unsupervised I use it in a room in my basement and I'm always with it I never leave it running for long periods of time so um, you know I'm a, it might, it's running fine and I have no problem using this now another thing I want to show you real quick is this has a reset fuse my original didn't have this so if for some reason this would meet the threshold temperature which would be 250 this would I believe it pops up or some somehow and it would cut power to the unit. And then once the unit cools down, you could reset it by, I think, by pushing this back in and uh, turning the power back on. Once you have them mounted, you're gonna attach your clips. There's a little just slot in there. You're just gonna line it up. And push it down like that. And then once it's on, there should be resist some resistance. If you try to like pull up, it shouldn't just come up. There should be some resistance. And so you know it's on there real tight, but just like that. And you're uh, set to test your unit. Once they have the unit plugged in and all set to go, just hit your power button. fan should come on. I usually run mine about 68 degrees. Like that. And you notice the heating elements are on. And it's running good. Just realize that when you shut the unit off, you have to hit the power button here, not in the back of the unit. You have to give it a, a chance to cool down. If you don't give the unit a chance to cool down, those thermal fuses could blow again. So uh, just that's my tip. I hope this helped. Uh, and if you have any feedback or criticism, I'm sure if I said something wrong, I may have, you know, let me know, correct me. But uh, I just hope to help someone. And these are nice units, and they're pretty easy to fix. And there's no need to uh, throw them in the trash if, if they stop working. Chances are it's going to be that thermal fuse. So have a good one. Take it easy.